go and see the end we start from movie, you will not be disappointed. Welcome back to Book Break. My name is Emma and I work for the publisher, Pan Macmillan, who publish the book The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. And we are always so excited when any of our books get made into films. But this one has been particularly exciting because it's an incredible film and it stars the magnificent Jodie Comer. And I was very lucky to get a chance to go along to an early screening of this film. So I have already seen it and I can confirm that it a is incredible and b is a really good adaptation of this book <laughs> it isn't real anymore hi what you miss doesn't exist the end we start from is about a dystopian which i say in inverted commas because this is a dystopia that is already happening all over the world and could very easily happen in this country but as far as our lives have been so far, this is a dystopian vision of a London that becomes flooded due to climate change. And in the midst of that chaos, a woman who has just given birth cannot return home from the hospital where she's just been in labour and has to take her husband and baby and flee the city trying to find safe ground further north. And they soon learn that their homes aren't safe, the very ground they walk on isn't safe, the people that surround them aren't safe. It's very scary. <laughs> I had previously read this book right back when I first joined the company actually, but I thought that I would give it a reread ready for watching the film. So I'm gonna show you some little vlog footage of my reactions to rereading this book. I first read this book a few years ago when it first came out and I remember absolutely loving it and absolutely racing through it. It's a really short, really fast paced book and actually if you look on the pages there aren't even that many words to a page so the author has really used a very small number of words in a very clever way to bring this story to life. The tension throughout this book is incredibly high and I remember absolutely racing through it but of course in preparation for the movie I am really excited to reread it and remind myself quite how good this book is. I've just been reading some of this book in the bath and managed to get water all over it which feels pretty appropriate because of all the flooding. I have forgotten some of the terrifying details in this book. So you get really drip fed information about what's going on, both about the flood and also about human behavior, like human reactions to this kind of disaster and how quickly people turn on each other. So they're sort of watching the news and little flashes of information come through and things are happening to people that they know. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but my heart is like racing from this. And also it's really interesting reading this book after the pandemic. Last time I read it was before that and so many of these details ring really true. Obviously this is like a, a much more extreme like natural disaster situation but a lot of the ways that people react to this kind of emergency situation feels really familiar to what we all went through. I would say Station Eleven vibes to be honest. If you like Station Eleven you will love this. It's one of those books where you are constantly trying to work out what you would do in this situation, who you would trust, who you have to trust. It is going to be really difficult to tear myself away and go and eat dinner, but I need to. I have never written so fast, desperate to get back to my book. So I finished this book this morning and it blew me away all over again. It's so clever. Like I said, it's such a short book and yet every word on every page does so much work to bring this story to life, to pack it with so much emotion, so much tension, so much terror, so much uncertainty and ultimately a lot of hope. So I am really excited to go to the cinema tomorrow and see how the film brings this story to life. So I think it's going to work really well on screen. So I'm here, that is the BFI behind me. I'm about to go in and I am so excited to see how this book is going to translate to the screen. So as you can see, this book took me on an emotional journey. It was so stressful and tense to read, so page turning. It really is a brilliant book. I can't recommend it enough and you saw me all the way up to being outside the cinema ready to go in and watch this film and it was phenomenal. What's so amazing about this book is that The End We Start From is about a mother, a new mother who has just given birth and while this terrifying catastrophe is happening in the background and that is what drives her to have to leave her home and try and survive, Ultimately, what she is focused on is protecting her baby, is having a newborn baby and going through so many of the same things that 
any new parent with a newborn baby has to do. The sleepless nights, the trying to stop your baby from crying, none of that changes just because there's a natural disaster happening. So the book really centers that relationship between mother and baby, and the film did a really good job of that as well. And the screening that I went to had a Q&A at the end with the director, Maharia Bailo, and the screenwriter, Alice Birch, who adapted the novel for the screen. And one of the things that they spoke about was something that they called the baby gaze, which was referring to the shots um, that they put together from the perspective of the baby. And in amongst a film that is a lot of the time very uh, distressing and terrifying and makes us look at a future that we are, all of us, kind of in denial about at the moment, all of those shots that were from the perspective of the baby were full of hope. They all showed the things that do go on in the face of catastrophe, the things that will survive. Seeing the world through the eyes of a baby is inherently one of hope, inherently one of innocence and joy. And that really came from the book because, again, amongst all of the chaos, the bond between mother and child is really pure and innocent and we get to see all these different steps, all these different stages in the baby's first kind of year on earth and all of those moments are filled with hope. One of the other fascinating things I learned from the Q&A is the fact that they actually were filming this movie during a drought and so they weren't allowed really to use very much water which is a big challenge when you're making a film about a catastrophic flood. But again, this kind of fits well with the fact that while there were some incredible scenes with water crashing through windows and absolutely terrifying stuff, for a lot of the time the flood is background to the, the human nature, which is really at the forefront of this book, mostly about this mother and her baby, but also about how other humans react to disaster, how communities form, how easily communities break, how people can turn on each other, but how there can also be these unexpected moments of kindness between basically strangers. There are some really lovely characters in both book and film, so nobody has any names, but there is just the central mother whose husband is called R, and one of my favourite people that she meets along the way is a woman called O. O is another new mother and these two women help each other and they form this really amazing bond and actually seeing that on screen was lovely and those moments brought quite a lot of lightness to the story. In the book there is no dialogue which is very very interesting and not something that I'd actually noticed until it was pointed out to me um, but you never actually get to hear what anybody sounds like when they talk to each other whereas in the film there was a lot of rapport between the two main women and jokes and moments that, that kind of really lifted the film. So really overall I just cannot recommend both book and film enough. I really urge you to pick this one up and read it. It's very very short and the pages look like this so it really will not take you long to read at all and then go and see the film. Or do it in the other order, and there's a lot of debate about whether people like to read the book first or watch the film first, and I say, you do you. Do whichever one you want, but make sure that you do both. Each of them will bring something slightly different. The film added a few moments that you won't find in the book, and the book obviously allows you to dive deeper inside somebody's head and really get to hear all of their thoughts. I think they're really beautiful companion pieces. I already mentioned earlier a comparison to Station Eleven. I think if you're a fan of Station Eleven, you will love both this book and this film. I would also compare it to Leave the World Behind, which is a really interesting, um, very hazy, surreal, dreamlike dystopian novel in which I'm never quite sure what's going on. And I definitely get some of those same vibes in here. A lot of things are alluded to. They're never explicitly told what's happening. And it also really reminded me of Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. That's a short story collection. Um, and the stories are all about women and their bodies in different ways. And one of the stories is set in this kind of apocalyptic post-flood future. And it's a really great story, again, really surreal and dreamlike, and it gave me the same vibes as this. So if you like any of those things, you will love this.
I have spent all the time since finishing rereading this and watching the film being very glad that we are not in a flood and I now think I'm going to be terrified of rain forevermore. So do let me know in the comments if you have read The End We Start From, if you're planning to go and see the film, really think you should, it's fantastic. And if you're interested in book to screen adaptations, I will link here to a playlist of all of the other videos I've made talking about our books that have been made into films. And of course, subscribe to this channel for new behind the scenes info on Pamela Books every fortnight and I'll see you next time.